last lecture we were discussing about homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis, different type of catalysts which are used. So, depending upon the reaction type of reaction where the catalysts are used, they are broadly classified as homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. So, this is the broader classification and sometimes in between we can have a combination of heterohomogeneity like com organometallic complexes which can have some solid particles or small particles and partly dissolutes into the liquid something like a biocatalysis or enzymes. They are also amino acids high molecular weight acids amino acids and they when you have the reaction during the reaction or bio enzymatic reactions the part of these dissolutes and acts like an homogeneous catalyst and in the rest acts as a heterogeneous catalyst. So, sometimes these are also categorized as a heterogeneized homogeneous catalyst. So, broadly if you look at it is homogeneous and heterogeneous. So, if you look at your uh, sulfuric acid alkylation right or HF alkylation or uh, 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 H3PO4 that is phosphoric acid polymerization. So, these are homogeneous reaction in petrochemical industry and still they are being used although the acid concentration is very high and a different kind of material of construction is required for these kind of reaction. So, if you look at homogeneous catalyst, we have acid base catalyst. So, as I said that biodiesel formation through trans esterification reaction where uh, methanol is used along with the uh, esters or long chain methyl esters or fatty acid methyl esters are the product which are known as biodiesel and mainly from, from the triangle sites, right. So, fats, oils, fats these can be converted into biodiesel that is fatty acid methyl ester in the presence of some catalyst which can be a heterogeneous catalyst which is being tried nowadays or it can be a homogeneous catalyst like sulfuric acid or caustic KOH, NOH right. So, these are example of acid catalyst and same thing I, I give the example of HF alkylation which is again a homogeneous reaction system. And now a new concept which is being used for the homogeneous catalyst because the activity of a homogeneous catalyst is very high. So, everybody is looking for the homogeneous system and ionic liquid is also one of the example of homogeneous uh, catalytic reaction. So, transition metal complex which are organometallic complex right generally uh, again uh, in the form of the same metal which is used in the heterogeneous catalyst over some support. Now, it can be in terms of something like a ligands like EDTA and over that you can have a metal complex which can form some organometallic complexes right. So, these can be have a kind of homogeneous structure or gel type structure during the liquid phase reaction and can be used widely as a homogeneous catalyst which has higher activity compared to the heterogeneous catalytic reaction. In heterogeneous catalyst, we have the bulk catalyst, but we discussed last time also that the entire material itself acts as a catalyst, right. So, just like if I use alumina for the dehydration reaction or zeolite ZSM5, normally they are used as a support, but this can be used as a catalyst also, right. So, that is known as a bulk catalyst and supported catalyst sometimes or in more many cases we would like to have the active metal deposited on some large surface area right. And there the active metal concentration is low, but the support has a very high surface area. And the idea is that the support can provide sometimes a different kind of site also right. That is the acidic site and metal function have may have some different kind of and though these are uh, different kind of activity and they can be called as a bifunctional catalyst also. So, metal function and support. So, especially if you look at your reforming reaction plate forming reaction in the presence of platinum alumina catalyst. So, it has dual site or metal site and acid site. So, part of this activate the hydrogenation reaction part of the acid sites activate the isomerization activity right. So, these are the examples of the supported catalyst. So, this is one broader classification of the catalyst, but there can be the specific named catalyst also say alkylated catalyst which are used for alkylation reaction, hydrogenation catalyst right nickel, platinum, palladium these are act as acting as a hydrogenation catalyst and similarly for different reactions sometimes we call it acid catalyst, sometimes we call them base catalyst. So, there can be other classifications of the catalyst. Uh, there are advantage of homogeneous catalyst as well as for the heterogeneous also. So, just I have given here a comparison between 
homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. So, activity centers if you look at the homogeneous because it is a kind of nucleates right or micro emulsions the catalyst is in homogeneous solution and homogenized. So, it will have a kind of microstructures or nanoparticles of the active material. So, the low concentration is efficient, efficient in that case right. So, all type of metals will be there in the homogeneous solution and when you look at here the only surface atoms are active for the reaction right. So, which are the concentration even may be high, but if the catalyst is not well prepared then the effective concentration may be too low right. So, here in terms of concentration low concentration can be desired, but in the case of heterogeneous you may need high concentration because total amount of material which is adsorbed on the support may not be active for the reaction right. Selectivity in homogeneous catalyst the selectivity is very high right or regard relatively high and that is why the new trends are also looking for the development of homogeneous catalyst for the system right if other problems are resolved. So, here the selectivity is relatively lower compared to the homogeneous catalyst. Diffusion problems because the mass transfer, heat transfer these are the severe problems in heterogeneous catalytic reaction when you have a solid and over that the gas or the liquid is adsorbing. So, there may be a layers of the gas or liquid and creating a large amount of resistance for the mass transfer right. So, mass transfer resistance is very common in heterogeneous catalytic reaction, but in the case of homogeneous this diffusion problem is avoided. So, practically absent right. Same thing for the reaction conditions generally these are carried out at low reaction conditions, but heterogeneous can be carried out at high condition high temperatures right. Uh, applicability for the homogeneous because of their temperature limitations right they are very sensitive to temperatures. So, it is limited whereas, in the case of heterogeneous catalyst they can be widely used. So, still the heterogeneous catalysts are widely used in process industry because of the limitations of the homogeneous catalyst and activity loss. So, most of the cases it is irreversible reaction with product right whereas, in the heterogeneous catalyst the activity loss because of the sintering problem right because it is a high temperature reaction condition. So, sintering may be a problem the concentration of the active metal is large. So, it gets agglomerated during reaction. Properties wise if you look at catalyst properties the structure or stoichiometry it is well defined whereas, in the case of heterogeneous the no clear cut definition is available in terms of structure or textual property morphology pore size pore size structure. So, many complicated uh, uh, structures or geometrical pictures may come when you look at a heterogeneous catalyst. So, sometimes they are beneficial also in, in terms of the textual property if you have some kind of defects the atomic defects electronic structure where there are certain kinds of foreign elements and that can provide you a different kind of activity for a given reaction. So, sometime it may be good also uh, thermal stability as I said uh, earlier also the homogeneous catalyst have low stability compared to the heterogeneous catalyst and catalyst separation this is the big problem in fact, in the case of homogeneous catalyst the separation of the catalyst from the product or reactant mixture. So, sometimes it becomes a laborious or costly affairs right whereas, in heterogeneous this is not required because all the time it is a solid catalyst and you can filter it easily. And recycling is possible if you can separate the catalyst from the system then in homogeneous case the catalyst can be recycled. Uh, in fixed bed also the, since the it is not required only regeneration is required when the catalyst activity drop faster right. The cost of catalyst here because the preparation problems is severe and technology need to be developed. So, cost of catalyst losses in this case is high compared to the heterogeneous catalysis. The solid catalyst what we are discussing in this uh, course structure that in any catalyst you will have an active phase, but we are talking either a metal right. Then you will have a support on which you are depositing this metal. So, generally we need a high surface area. So, to provide a better dispersion and good kind of properties for the metal though good electronic structure. So, that is important and beside these two that is the part of the catalyst to enhance the activity of the catalyst or to reduce the deactivation in the catalyst we add promoters which may not have a catalytic activity, but it supports the 
main catalyst in order to enhance the activity of a some reaction or in it can suppress the activity of the undesired reaction also right so so that that combination makes a complete catalyst that active phase what is active phase which may be a metal right inorganic metal and most of the time promoter may be some kind of uh, which can have the textural promoter which can have some kind of chemical strength provider right so all these kind or of active metals like potassium can be a promoter for some of the reaction and there can be iron just like in ammonia you add the small concentration right for the ammonia synthesis. So, that is a kind of promoter to enhance the or to support the main catalyst. So, we will just talk on that. So, promoter is basically it can be a textual promoter, textual promoter means it is a it is not providing anything to the catalyst, but it provides some strength to the support right. Because when you look at a FCC reactor just like fluid catalytic cracking you have the zeolite type catalyst right uh, and uh, uh, since you are using a fluid bed reactor. So, you need to have the smaller particles right. So, the particles are moving in the riser which is of some cylindrical tube right a small diameter tube at certain velocity along with the hydrocarbon vapor. So, these particles are just colliding among themselves right. So, it should have enough mechanical strength right. So, in that case you need to provide a sufficient mechanical strength to the catalyst right. So, textural promoters it can be uh, a material which provides the strength to the catalyst or simultaneously it avoids the sintering of the metal particle right. How does it avoid the sintering? Uh, just if you look at here uh, suppose we have the metal particles here and another metal particle here which are and these two are separated on some support right. So, what happens as I discussed last time that during the course of reaction or high temperature these will agglomerate and it may become a larger particle which you call sintering right. So, this is the major cause of catalyst deactivation because of sintering high temperature operation. But if you add some promoter in between suppose if I have this particle this is another catalyst particle and in between you make some a bridging of some third element or third metal which sits in between and a stable molecule right. So, now this will not allow the metals to come together to come closure right. So, this is a kind of textual promoter here right and especially in the case of fischer trop reaction if you look at then the catalyst can or life of the catalyst can be prolonged during the reaction. So, this is what we were talking about the operation in terms of the sintering. So, for similarly for if you look at here for ammonia the aluminum iron generally they are used for the production and they act as a textual promoter. Uh, active site what we discussed here active phase right. So, it is basically the active phase which you are calling is the catalyst right. So, the catalyst it can be any metal right, but we have discussed earlier also. So, generally the good kind of metal how to select this the details of the that we will take later, but the most important thing is that the catalyst for a good catalyst activity the metal should have some unpaired d electrons or d orbitals per atom right. So, number of d orbitals which are available in a metal depending upon that the catalyst will have activity for adsorption of say hydrogen any gas or carbon monoxide right. So, if more d orbitals are present then the binding will be stronger right. So, it is a strong binding because number of metals uh, the d orbitals per atoms are more. So, as I said that the strong binding is also not desired because if they are strongly binded metal and the hydrocarbon species or gases species strongly binded then it will not allow the metal or metal will not allow the gases species to leave it right. Because ultimately it is something like that there should be a binding then there may be a kind of transformation into some form of transition complex right or intermediate and which transform to a adsorb product and that product desorbs. So, for having a good catalytic activity the interaction between these metal species or on the support as well as interaction for a gas molecule onto this metal should be a controlled one right. 
So, uh, that is it should neither be too strong or nor it should be too weak. So, if it is too weak the mat gas will leave the surface easily right without converting into the product right. So, this is very important when you select. So, generally see group 8 metal like all this platinum, palladium, cobalt, nickel. So, they have one d orbital per atom. So, it has sufficient or reasonably good activity for adsorbing hydrogen. So, they are good for hydrogenation reaction right. So, they can adsorb hydrogen easily and sufficiently bind it, but if you look at some of the metals which have large number of d orbitals right niobium right or even sort of molybdenum. So, they have the large number of d orbital in the metal form right. So, they strongly binds the hydrogen or carbon monoxide on its surface. So, the activity for reaction will be poor. So, you while selecting a metal or a support same thing for the support also the metal should not strongly binded with the support right. And also the when you have a kind of say oxidation reaction. So, silver can take oxygen easily. So, it may not be a good catalyst for that right. So, sometimes you have to select a definite combination of metal support for a given reaction. So, it will depend on the type of gas it's especially also the type of metal and on the support where it is deposited. So, normally sometimes you are taking support as an inert material, but how this metal has been interac interacted with that support that is also equally important for a chemical reaction right. So, that is what I am talking here the active site which is most crucial that you have given the enough number of metal concentration on your support, but it may not be active right. So, that is related to some number which is dispersion we will talk on that later, but basically the active site is a point on the catalyst surface that can form strong chemical bond with an adsorbed atom or molecule right. So, so this is the definition of active site that it should take the gases species or reactant species and this definition will be used throughout the course because whenever you have a catalytic reaction we talk in terms of adsorption of species A surface reaction and chemical that is surface reaction then trans chemical reaction and then transformation of the product finally, dissolved right and that will happen on the active site which is available on the surface. So, the active sites which is basically a bonding of the metal, but if you look at any unsaturated atom in the solid the active site can come because of the surface irregularity. So, kind of defects right. So, in the metal generally or in a support also itself we talk in terms of structure a case where how the metal is attached to a uh, support right and what is their electronic configuration. So, yesterday I was talking about FCC face centered cubic structure right. BCC body centered cubic structure right. So, and it may be th third one is HCC right hexagonal cubic structure. So, idea is that whether they are in the form of cuboid and where these metals are attached to that cuboids right and it and what is their orientation if I just look at uh, talk x y z plane right. So, 1 0 0 like that which has everything in terms of suppose if I say 1 is my x coordinate. So, everything is coordinate to directing towards x right same thing it can be 0 0 1 also right everything is directing towards z coordinate system. So, how the molecules are or atoms are attached in the structure that is known as the orientation of these right. So, orientation of this metal on the support as well as orientation of the gas molecule which is along coming to this and that is related to your sticking probability or sticking coefficient. So, sticking coefficient is something which is related to your orinous factor or rate constant used in the reaction right. So, because it is the actual number of molecules which have interacted with the support and then finally, they are they have been able to transform into some useful product stool right. They are able to convert into some intermediate which is for reaction. So, all the molecules gas molecules may not be active for the chemical reaction right. So, it means the surface to have some to have some activity that there should be some edges some defects right. So, that is why when you look at a metal on a support you just look at its shape of the metal right. So, spherical shape it may be just like a prismoid shape right it may be some kind of say ellipto elliptoid shape. So, different kind of shape may be available and depending upon that the reaction activity. So, so sometimes we talk in terms of edges which is something like this structure something like this right more and more edges where you have the 
ability of a gas species which can come and attach on to this surface right. So, this these are some kind of defects or edges or electronic structure of the molecule everything is important here in the case of catalyst. So, same thing for dislocation cracks along the boundaries. So, a certain kind of defects should be there in if you look at in totality we want to have some kind of defects in a crystal to have a good kind of catalytic activity. So, activity we are defining as just the because it depends on the, the ability of a catalyst to transform a reactant into product right and which will depend again on the texture as well as the electronic structure which is coming because how the metal has been deposited on the support. So, it means the catalyst preparation is very crucial right the temperature which you are giving for heat treatment or aging or steering the pH if it is requiring the pH a definite uh, pH the or hydrogen ion concentration or acidity or basicity the definite kind of active centers may develop right. And when you do the calcination then you are getting different kind of phases during the reaction and uh, heat treatment step that is depend which may depend on the temperature as well as it may depend on the time of sintering right. So, that is basically called calcination step right. So, during calcination step also you are activating a metal and a support structure right and generating the different kind of phases. So, any activity of a catalyst if you look at any type of activity the active centers on the surface of the catalyst. So, how do you develop these active centers on the surface that is the first thing right and techniques are available to characterize them. Then geometry of the surface so that is as I said shape and uh, the shape size of the crystal morphology of that crystal. So, everything is important when you look at a catalytic activity. Electronic structure right the configuration of the electrons. So, how they are able to trans because the electronic configuration is again important because the metals will the whatever the metal which is deposited it will exchange the electron from the gases species or reactant right. So, the carbonium ion which you say that in the case of acid base catalyst. So, the, so you will have that kind of adsorption on the surface right. So, this is important then formation of the intermediates because that intermediate will convert finally, into the product. So, how these forms on the surface that is again important. So, efficiency if you look at here of a catalyst depends on activity selectivity and life. So, in general when you characterize a catalyst you have to finally, look at in terms of its activity that is ability to transform a reactant into a product and when we say product then we say a desired product. So, selectivity is important and of course, at the end we have to look at the turnover number right for how much time the catalyst can be used effectively. So, that is very important. So, that is what the life of a catalyst right. Sometimes we add a promoter which enhance instead of enhancing the activity of catalyst it suppress the activity catalyst. that is also desired in many cases right. Because you have seen from the thermodynamics or principle of micro reversibility which says that if the reaction is increasing in the forward direction the similar thing will happen in the reverse direction also right. So, it means when you have added a catalyst and if it, the catalyst which can have the activity for hydrogenation reaction the same catalyst may have activity for dehydrogenation reaction also right. So, it means if forward reaction rate is increasing then reverse reaction rate may also increase right. So, in that case it becomes very important that sometimes we add a passivator which suppress the activity of a catalyst and this generally we do especially where the poison precursors are present in the feed stock like say hydro desulphurization reaction right. So, you know that the in hydro desulphurization generally uh, we use cobalt molybdenum type catalyst. So, we call comox or nemox. So, cobalt molybdenum on some alumina type support or nickel molybdenum on alumina support. They have a good hydrogenation activity as well as they have good activity for the desulphurization reaction also. So, alumina catalyst. So, these are used for hydro desulphurization reaction HDS or sometimes we call hydro treatment also. So, as I said that if the activity is enhancing, but the sulfur in this because you are working with sulfur here removing the sulfur from the petroleum feed stock right 
and if the feed contains sulfur then the poisoning of this catalyst becomes faster right because of the because this sul the sulfur is a poison precursor right and uh, see one type of deactivation where the catalyst can be regenerated but when you say it is poisoned then the regeneration is very difficult or it is almost impossible because it is irreversible chemisorption of the sulfur precursor on the active site of the metal so it blocks the site or it poisons the sites completely so your life of the catalyst will reduce faster so in order to passivate the activity for chemisorption or negative chemisorption i will say poisoning chemi, poison chemisorption the we add certain kind of passivators right which can suppress the activity for the main reaction also but also it will suppress the activity for the poisoning reaction also right so so uh, sometimes we presulfide the catalyst just like in your reforming reaction also we for the plate reforming the sulfur may be a poison precursor because sulfur is present in naphtha feed stock so we add certain kind of sulfur passivator or sulfur precursor in the form of say hydrogen sulfide we reduce the catalyst in the presence of hydrogen sulfide right so when you have the sulfur precursor already in the catalyst then activity of catalyst suppresses right so the activity of main reaction will also suppress but activity of poison precursor is also suppressed so that is in terms of saving the life of the catalyst right so sometime when the reaction is highly active so uh, we just try to suppress the catalyst by and especially when you have a fresh catalyst it will be very active right so a small concentration of some poison precursor it may be any sulfur precursor carbon disulfide say or hydrogen sulfide treatment so it can suppress the activity of the catalyst in order to avoid the poisoning of the catalyst right so that these are known as inhibitor so inhibitors are the substance which are added to the catalyst right during its manufacture to reduce its activity that is partial reduction or reduction by a small fraction right coking and fouling as again as i said this is the unwanted or undesired phenomena in the catalytic reaction or during the catalytic reaction so coke formation when you have a kind of hydrocarbon precursor and if you crack it so the ultimate end is nothing but the coke right and coke is nothing but poly condensed aromatic hydrocarbon so if you have a different benzene ring you give the heat treatment so benzene ring will condense together right because of dehydrogenation reaction and then the condensed polymeric this, this this will have something a structure like cxhy right anthracene where a large number of benzene rings connected together right and the large number of carbon and less number of hydrogen so that is nothing but the definition of coke which contains more than 90% carbon right so this coke is a product of severe cracking in that case hydrocarbon so sometimes in order to avoid these phenomenon we avoid we add certain kind of precursors right so coke which which can be just the job is to reduce the coke right just like uh, the potassium is one of that compound so if you have a hydrocracking carbon cracking on silica alumina catalyst suppose and if you add a small concentration of potassium on that then in the presence of steam the potassium reacts with the carbon of that catalyst so whatever the carbon deposits in the presence of potassium which have some kind of oxidation reduction cycle a redox kind of behavior right so this reduces the carbon on the catalyst so because it basically it's a kind of gasification reaction so potassium is converting the carbon so it is acting basically a catalyst for the gasification coke gasification but not for the main reaction right so sometimes we add the coke inhibitors also which so the, the this is one and the first example i gave that sulfur may be added right to reduce the main reaction cracking sometime with the coke is forming you just add in terms of the a gasifying agent same thing in the case of ceria also generally in reforming reaction over the main catalyst and nickel alumina generally these are used as a catalyst but if you have a small concentration of cerium oxide right so this has the excess oxygen right or it has good oxygen storage capacity right so the oxygen and again this will be a kind of redox cycle that is it will convert in one form coox and then again it will come to the other form because of the oxidation reduction cycle so it takes the in the uh, it it will react with the carbon right give it to the carbon dioxide convert it into carbon dioxide and again take the oxygen and convert into the ceria right so different type of chemical reactions are involved during this step and that we will see depending upon the time so deposition of the carbonous material on the surface of the catalyst which is common during the reaction of the hydrocarbon so sometime we 
have to add the inhibitor in order to avoid this kind of reaction. And beside that there are different kinds of uh, other promoters also say electric and structural modifiers. So, sometimes we add the to give a different kind of electric conductivity, heat conductivity during the because especially uh, when you react the material the say ceria, alumina, when you need that the heat distribution is not proper. So, sometime a conductive material can be added right uh, uh, in the catalyst and that can provide you the sufficient kind of heat transfer right or some kind of electronic transformation. So, structural modifiers can be added like graphite is added when you prepare the catalyst a small concentration of graphite or even a wood cellulose material if you add then it it is known as a pore former right. So, if you need a highly porous catalyst, so during calcination this will gasify and you will have more or more number of pores or large size of pores. So, so these are known as pore former in the catalyst. So, graphite acts as a pore former right and same thing for the uh, sometimes the poison resistant promoters we had as I discussed earlier also. Then support carrier, so support part we have already discussed again and uh, the main purpose of the support is the the carrier that is support carrier when I am saying it is a it may be just either you say support or carrier both are same meaning right. So, uh, anything like alumina as I said adjacent pipe, so these are acting as a support we generally provide the high surface area right. But simultaneous in reactions the support itself may be as a catalyst or it can be a bifunctional catalyst also. So, sometimes we have two type of metal species like cobalt molybdenum, so it is a bifunctional. So, cobalt will have one role, moly will have another role right. Same thing nickel moly, so nickel have one role, cobalt has another role. So, these are also known as bimetallic catalysts and same thing for multimetallic catalyst. So, different metals may have a different role during catalytic activity. So, we will look at those parts later, but right now I am saying the role of support is the main role is to increase the surface area and to provide the sufficient strength or mechanical strength to the catalyst right. So, and these are may and may not be catalytic active as I said that alumina it may act as a catalyst because it is amphotric in nature right acid base both type of property sometimes adjacent 5 which have highly acidic property. So, it can provide the acid function right acid sites to the catalyst which helps in cracking reaction right. So, in the solid catalyst we use different kind of support. So, alumina is one which is the advantage is that most common support is alumina because it is inexpensive also and surface area it is a wide it has wide range of surface area right. So, 1 meter square per gram to 7 meter square per gram. So, you can see that a simple a single chemical species alumina A L 2 O 3 right, but the area wise if you look at that can be. So, structure wise it is just like this one right and amphotric in nature right, but the surface area is coming because of the pore structure right. So, the pores which are present between the particle right or within the particle itself. So, they, there can be different kind of pores. So, one is the pore between the particle of alumina, another is the pores which have you have made a pellet of several particles right. So, bit space between the particle. So, that is a kind of pore structure which you develop when you have I give the sufficient compression right. When you make a tablet then depending if you apply more stress. So, you are increasing the density right more force you are compressing it. So, pellet density is increasing and that is required a tuning is required in terms of mechanical strength versus the pore structure right. So, extrudates versus pellet this is the only difference. So, extrudates and versus pellet right. So, extrudates where the strength is poor right because you are not applying that much pressure in making a pellet you are just passing it through a die right molding machine and die and then you get the just like your noodles right and you get. So, they are very soft material and uh, but their porosity will be high right because you have not compressed them. So, the space between the particle will be more right. So, but the mechanical strength is poor. So, when you handle it in a fixed bed reactor and especially at high pressure, so they will get crumbled right. So, a sub definite size of the catalyst is also required because when in the fixed bed reactor when you use the powdered catalyst the pressure drop will increase right and pressure drop increasing means you are giving more energy for the conversion right. So, energy consumption will be more. So, we have to tune 
that in terms of mass transfer resistance also as well as in terms of the mechanical operation. So, when you are giving a pellet with sufficient strength right the problem is that you have reduced the porosity because when you are applying making a pellet you are compressing it and by compression the density can be increased three times right in a pellet you can have three times more dense pellet from the same powder material because you are compressing it to a level, but when you have compressed it highly then the porosity will go down right. So, most of the time we de the desired thing is this that because we want highly porous material. So, we want a highly porous material for the chemical reaction because the catalytic reaction is inside the pore structure not on the external surface and internal surface is more important. So, extrudates are better in terms of providing the large surface area, but the mechanical strength of the extruder will be poor. So, it in case you are using extruder you need to provide sufficient mechanical strength. So, additives need to be added. So, sometime in the FCC catalyst we add the additives to improve the mechanical strength of the catalyst a sufficient binding is required. So, different kind of catalytic supports can be used same thing for silica also. So, why surface area just I was discussing that part that why surface area is changing it is because of the heat treatment when you calcine it you get a different phases in alumina. So, gamma alumina may have a surface area like your 220 to 500 meter square per gram right, but when you heat it continuously you get alpha alumina right. So, alpha alumina is almost non porous material almost centered alumina gamma alumina because and this is happening when you have a phase transformation during the heat treatment. So, if you take alumina particle or gamma alumina heat it from 25 degree centigrade to a 1000 degree centigrade. So, at 1000 degree centigrade you have almost the alpha alumina right almost non porous which is equivalent to 1 meter square per gram catalyst right. So, the basic idea here what I am talking is that say at surface area of the catalyst change depending upon the heat treatment conditions used right. So, uh, in reforming if you look at your fertilizer industry the reforming catalyst these are generally nickel on alpha alumina generally because the rea reforming reaction takes place at high temperature 800 degree centigrade or 1000 degree centigrade right. So, at that condition you may not have the gamma alumina rather it will be a kind of alpha alumina low surface area material. So, it can be a mass transfer control reaction there right. So, that is why the new concept in the reformer is that you go with a micro reformer system or channel type reactors what you call monoliths right. So, different kind of channel structures can be used for these where the reaction is mass transfer control because the diffusion resistance is more in those kind of pellets right. The length of diffusion is increasing. So, you give a wash coating or give it uh, a special coating to these kind of material. So, that the diffusion length is minimized right. So, these are the challenges uh, for the future. And uh, support can also provide say alumina is also acidic in nature, silica is also acidic in nature. So, sometimes they provide you the acidic sites required for the catalytic reaction. Again another catalyst support is zeolite which is widely used in petrochemical and refinery industry. So, FCC catalyst is generally this zeolite and there are different varieties of the zeolites available depending upon their silica to aluminum ratio. So, silicon aluminum to aluminum ratio is very important in the case of zeolite to provide its definite kind of acidity right. So, we will talk about that later. So, basically if you look at these are the alumina and silica mixture a clay type material these are natural uh, materials are also available silica to alumina have different structure, but they may not be crystalline in nature right, but they can also have the similar composition like zeolite right, but they cannot be used as a catalyst directly. So, we need some treatment. So, often exchange with metal ion depending upon the requirement say like LPG aromatization the gallium exchange at ZSM 5 where proton H can be replaced by the gallium metal and that can be used for aromatization reaction right. So, LPG like or propane butane. So, these straight chain compounds can be aromatized by using these catalyst right. Shape selective they have very definite structure and pore size. So, they also called as molecular sieves right or a sieve selective activity. So, sometimes they do not allow the larger molecules or larger aromatic molecular weight compounds through their pore because they have a definite channel diameter right. So, they are shape selective. So, one kind of molecule can go inside, but not the 
larger kind of molecule which has a ring type structure. So, they are called safe selective also we will talk on that later and they are highly acidic in nature. So, they are also used as a support as well as as catalyst. Beside this the other catalyst supports are also like active carbon. So, activated carbon has very high surface area. So, this can be used as an adsorbent this is used for separation and purification of the gases also because the high surface area and good adsorption property right, but it is also used as a catalyst support also. And uh, titania is another one right which has 10 to 50 meter square per gram surface area, zirconia which is ZRO2, titania is TiO2 ok, zirconia is ZRO2 right and this is again a surface area 10 to 100 meter square per gram. Then similarly, magnesia powder can be used as a catalyst, lanthana can be used as a catalyst. So, they have low surface area and these are basically the basic catalyst right. So, titanium dioxide is generally used for the UV assisted photocatalytic reaction also because they have a good semiconducting property right. So, electron band theory if you look at. So, there a good kind of see a gap band gap where you the electron can be transferred through that. So, when you have a certain kind of UV light, so that band be becomes active right and it can transfer electrons. So, it has wide application in the especially in the waste water treatment or advanced oxidation process and titania is one of the catalysts which is used for photoactive or photo assisted catalytic reaction. So, not all catalysts can have the, those kind of. So, those who are semiconductive property they can be used as a catalyst for UV under UV light right. So, characteristics of small particles and porous material. So, I was talking about the preparation of catalyst, the size of the particle is very important right. So, we can have different shape of the catalyst like most of the time we talk cylindrical pellets, the pellets can be spherical in geometry also and they can have a ring shape also right. So, the, the different structures are available also and why do we need a definite size of a pellet or shape of a pellet is related to your mass transfer and diffusion limitation right. So, we try to avoid the mass transfer limitation or the reaction where the react it is controlled by mass transfer we try to have large surface area per unit volume and that is basically the external surface area right. So, because there the reaction takes place between the gas and liquid interface suppose right or a gas and solid interface not the in the inside surface. So, this is the case what I was talking for the reforming reaction in fertilizer industry right when you look at naphtha reforming or natural gas reforming. So, the catalyst has almost low surface area 10 meter square per gram. So, where the reaction is taking place it is mainly on the external surface of the catalyst. So, there the it is a channel geometry is better just like a plate, plate and frame heat exchanger right. So, you have different channels and on this you have a large surface area on on which the active metal is deposited right. So, we do we are not interested in having a diffusion inside that is that length should be as small as possible and this is the concept when we are talking a monolith reactor or monolith channel type reactors right. So, the basic idea is that the catalyst can have different type of shape different geometry, but the selection is done based on the reaction or a different kind of reaction will have different kind of catalyst shape right. So, mass transfer reaction the catalyst shape may be a trilob, quadrilob, pentalob right because the external we would like to have a large surface area. So, just like fin structure where you have a cylindrical geometry, but outer side you have a fins like this right a radiator type device. So, the, these fins will provide the external surface area right. So, same thing can be in the ring shape structure. So, rings are when you are taking the ring structure when I am saying it is something like structure like this right. So, this is just like a ring structure. So, again it has large surface area and another advantage is that it has less pressure drop right. So, when you have a ring this kind this kind of ring. So, it is a it has less pressure drop compared to a pellet. So, depending upon the reactor system and depending upon the type of reaction we select a definite shape of a catalyst and we will talk on that later also. So, as I said the catalyst is a surface phenomena when we are talking a heterogeneous catalysis we are more cautious about the size, we are more cautious about the particle size, pore size distribution and then structural and textural property of the catalyst. So, if you look at an efficient catalyst we want a large surface area that is the first thing implying that the active particle must be 
small. So, smaller particles will have larger surface area even if you talk the external, but when we talk the internal surface area it is because the porous geometry, but that time internal smaller particles is not because of they have large surface area, but rather we are trying to avoid the diffusional limitation inside the pellet. right? So, for a smaller particle the diffusion resistance in the pore will be less or minimum. right? So, when you look at the kinetic study you try to have a definite size of a particle and tune it in such a way that pressure drop should be minimum, right? but at the same time the diffusion or internal diffusion resistance should not affect the rate of reaction. right? So, you are ensuring that the it is the kinetics of a reaction right? which is for the transformation of a reactant species into the product and ultimately when I am talking about the kinetics I am talking a surface reaction which has the adsorption then surface reaction and then the desorption step for transformation into a product species. Right? But beside that the other two steps are the mass transfer external mass transfer and internal diffusion in the pore of a catalyst. Right? So, all these steps have important role. So, uh, especially when we are looking the reactor design we have to look at the catalyst type of catalyst its size and the type of reaction. So, bubble column reactor may be one slurry bubble column reactor which is generally used for fissure trap reaction. Right? So, where you need the heat transfer limitation also mass transfer limitation also. So, you have to select a definite reactor and then a definite catalyst right? in terms of shape and size of a catalyst. So, the properties of interest in the catalyst the first one is the dispersion. right? So, dispersion definition says that it is a fraction of the atom that is active metal right? which is available for chemical reaction. Right? So, located on the surface of the particle and a specific area when we report it is the nothing but surface area per unit mass of the catalyst. right? So, small metal particles they are generally unstable and prone to sintering. So, as I said the nano particles everybody is looking for nano particles right? because the reason is that they have high surface area point volume. right? So, if surface area is high your rate of reaction will be very high. So, especially when you are looking mass transfer or homogeneous catalytic system this fundamental thing is very important that how to generate the nano particles. Right? The only thing that is stable nano particles. So, when you have a gel inside the gel the nano particles are stable, but when you have ruptured that gel right, heat treated that gel then the nano particles have come out and when you use them in the reaction they agglomerate easily. Right? And so, this is the challenge that how to make the in make stable nano particles. Right? So, the small metal particles they are unstable because they are prone to sintering right? agglomeration particularly at temperatures where typical catalytic reactions are carried out. So, this is one problem or one challenge. So, therefore, most of the heterogeneous catalytic that are used in industry they consist the particles inside the pore of an inert support. So, because there the sintering is avoided you have the metals on one support which is interacting right a kind of interaction between metal and support and that is what we are calling metal support interaction right. So, the one metal is supported another metal is supported and in between you can have a promoter. So, chances of sintering is reduced. So, this thing we have already taught silica, alumina, titania, magnesia, zinc, oxide, zirconia, carbon they can be used as a support right. So, a definite but which support is good that will depend on the pore structure of the support that will depend on its reducibility also because depending upon the type of metal how does the metal interacts on the support is also equally important because we do not want a strong metal support interaction right. SMSI is also related to the catalytic property because if it is strongly binded activity will be poor right. So, morphology of the particles is determined based on the surface energy this time the particle themselves and the substrate. So, this will this thing I will discuss later, but basically the energy is very important surface energy of a particle right what you call gamma generally we report the energy of a particle and depending upon the distance free that is what uh, the wolf construction chart which that talks which talks on the how a surface creates right. So, whether it is pentagon or hexagon or a square geometry or spherical in shape it will depend on the wolf energy because the surface tries to have its minimum energy. So, whatever the space or the crystal geometry that depends on so many factors that is 
preparation condition and their uh, the uh, metal support and the valency of these that is the electronic configuration of metal and support. So, that we will discuss later. This is what I was talking a support right. So, this is a porous solid if you look at here. So, one solid and now this is a cavity inside that a kind of crack which you can say, but it is not actually the crack it, it can be the pores in the particle itself right or it can be the pore between two particles right. So, this this but, but the structure which you are looking is the nothing but the void space in a support right and there will be millions of this kind of channels right. So, this this is structure cylindric kind of cylindrical geometry of a definite diameter right it can be a micro it can be macro or meso pore right different pore structure. But generally the we call these are cylindrical in shape, but the they can have a kind of ink bottle if a, uh, shape also that is they are narrower towards neck and then widens at the end. So, but the formation of these kind of pore is during the catalyst preparation. So, when you do the calcination, when you do the aging or drying of your catalyst right. So, there you then you are developing the pore and if you are adding pore former, so more pores will be formed. So, what is important in the case of catalyst preparation especially when you are looking at mono dispersed pellets right. Then the a single size pore or a definite pore size distribution or narrower pore size distribution is very important, but very difficult to generate this kind of pores right. So, reproducibility in the catalyst preparation is again a very crucial issue right. So, you have to prepare the catalyst then again check characterize it do the XRD measure the crystal size dispersion and then prepare the same catalyst again and then recheck right. And especially when you are making a bulk of the catalyst in large amount then these things becomes more and more crucial and challenging right. So, this is a typical that these, these points are nothing but the active side what I am talking any metal which is deposited. So, it will go inside the pore and it will deposit here. So, this is the channel or zone where the gas species will come and adsorb right. So, any gas species will come and adsorb here and then it will react either with this or another adsorb species and transform into the product. So, there is a kind of surface diffusion or what you call spillover. So, a term which is known as spillover nothing but the molecule which adsorbs and it migrates into the towards the support the kind of surface diffusion right. And because of that so, sometime it happened that it migrates and reacts with the support itself and remain there right. Another thing that it migrates and reacts with the another mode of species and transform. So, that is a kind of spillover phenomena or surface diffusion. So, the molecule uh, is coming here on this like this and here another B and this and then these two are interacting right. How these are interacting because of the spillover phenomena or surface diffusion right. So, support part what we are talking they principally serves as a framework on which the catalyst is deposited. So, that is what we have seen, but the catalytic activity is rare sometimes it has. So, I will say no catalytic property of its own, but when you are alumina type your silica type sometimes they act as a catalyst also. So, carrier results in highly porous structure. So, when you are selecting a support a definite support is required. So, preparation of the support can be done or support can be taken directly or the metal can be impregnated on it or loaded onto it. So, it has highly porous structure. So, increase of available surface area right that is important. It improves the stability of the catalyst and it improves the heat transfer. So, depending upon these you have to select a definite support for a given reaction. Same thing for promoter. So, promoter is an additive which has no catalytic property of its own, but enhances the activity of catalyst right. Like potassium can be added as a promoter, iron can be added as a promoter. So, main catalyst is different but a small concentration of the promoter is desired because if you have higher concentration it may cover the surface of the active metal and no chemical action may happen right or activity will reduce. So, that is again important. So, promoter generally results sometimes the increase of available surface area right if the surface area is low you add a small concentration and then you can enhance the surface area. Stabilization against the crystal growth and centering. So, most of the time we look these factors the definite which can make the good dispersion right. Say copper if you have a small concentration of copper or zinc it may enhance the dispersion in the 
catalytic reaction especially when you have fischer-tropsch type reactions right so it enhances the dispersion of that iron or cobalt catalyst and sometime it is added to improve the mechanical strength and sometime it can be added to reduce the coke on the catalyst also right so alumina asbestos these all are can be used as a promoter as well as support then accelerator again I have already discussed. So, these are substances which can be added to a reacting system to maintain the activity of the catalyst by nullifying the effect of poison. So, basically they are the substance which can reduce the poisoning of a reaction right. So, passivator or inhibitor when you say, but they are accelerating the reaction of main reaction by suppressing the activity of the coke forming reaction right. So, they are known as accelerator. So, poisons these are substance which reduce the activity of a catalyst. So, these may be present in the feed stock itself, sometimes these may be in the catalyst also right. So, they are not deliberately added, but are unavoidably deposited during the reaction. So, the poison precursors which may come from the feed stock, which may come from the product and deposits on the catalyst. So, they will reduce the activity of the catalyst. So, sulfur, lead, metal ions, mercury, lead, bismuth, tin, copper, iron these can be a catalyst for some other reaction, but if you are some other reaction then iron copper they can be a poison right. So, it means depend because the catalyst is very specific in its activity right very selective. So, does not mean that metal A is effective for one. So, for all reaction it is effective it may be a poison for the other reaction right. So, vanadium in sulfuric acid manufacture V 2 O 5 is used right, but in other case the vanadium is a poison right in hydrocarbon reaction vanadium comes from the feed stock hydrocarbon. So, it acts as a poison. So, I stop here and I uh, will continue it next time.